This is our first day in the UK. And it's his birthday. It won't be by the time you see this, but today is April 20th and we are in Stratford-upon-Avon. <laughs> We're going to mainly do Shakespeare stuff today because this is where he grew up. We're staying at the Doubletree by Hilton um, and if you want to come see Shakespeare's home and do Shakespeare stuff specifically this is a really great place because it's a two minute walk to his birthplace. That is Shakespeare's birthplace. We're about to go in, but we're not allowed to film inside. We'll take lots of pictures and tell you about it when we get out. Before you get to Shakespeare's birthplace house, there's a museum that you get to walk through. Uh, they didn't say that we couldn't film in here, so we'll get a couple of shots, and then we'll see what they say when we get to the actual birthplace. From what I'm reading, it is the original building, although it may look different from when Shakespeare lived there because it has gone under many renovations over the last 450 years. Um, I'm really excited to get in there. It looks really cool. That was the birthplace of William Shakespeare we just went through. It was fantastic. The people that worked there knew a lot. We actually had one lady who kind of was just moving through the rooms with us and telling us all kinds of things. Um, his father was mainly there and his family early on. He made gloves. They sold them out of the house. His father also did some other things that were kind of questionable, uh, but that's where he was raised. Interestingly enough, the lady told us that William's father had him taken out of school 
early to come and make gloves, which always makes me think that somewhere out there, there's probably somebody who has a pair of gloves made by William Shakespeare, which I thought was great. Definitely come and check it out if you're here. It is worth it. It doesn't really cost that much money. Uh, get the guidebook. It costs a little extra, but it will let you know a lot more than what we'll remember here. Something I thought was really cool about the property is that the house is divided into thirds. So on the farthest side, you had their original cottage, which was one room downstairs, one room upstairs. And that's where the um, William lived with his wife when they got married. They lived in that little cottage. And then I think there was like kind of in the middle was the main house. And then on the other end was the glove workshop where they, they made all the gloves and things. When William bought uh, the new place, which is where we're going to go to next, he leased the cottage, the one room cottage, to his sister Joan, who had like five kids, a husband and wife and five kids, in one room upstairs, one room downstairs. But he rented it to her for one shilling a year, which was really great. So I think the lady said it comes up to like five pence a year in today's money. I thought that was really cool. So we were headed to the new place, but we saw a Lush store and I've never bought a Lush bath bomb and now I'm gonna buy a bunch. What you do is you use your water and the more agitated it gets, the more bubbles that you get. So oh. Wow. Just let it sound. So in here we have tangerine oil and cream of tartar to soften. Wow. Do you want to say? So, ta -da. <laughs> Do you want to get your hand in? Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh, that's so nice in there. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get those. <laughs> 40 pounds later, we're on our way to a new place. We are here at New Place. Uh, we didn't know what to expect from a lot of these things, and unfortunately, there really isn't much here anymore these days. It's now a beautiful garden. It's the plot of land that Shakespeare's home was on. The house that he bought for him and his family was massive in that time period. It was huge. It was the second largest house in Stratford-upon-Avon. Um, it was over 100 years old when he bought it. It was a beautiful, gorgeous house. They moved in. Um, at, at that time, he had had three children, but his son had died. So when they moved in, it was just him and his wife and their other two children. Um, when he died, the house got passed down to his kids. And then there was a grandchild that died with no children. And that was the end of their family line. When, the, when they were all gone, the house got sold back to, funny enough, the original owners who had built it all those hundreds of years ago. Um, at, then when they bought it they tore it down and they put up a brand new home for their era which is a real bummer so that the original house isn't here and then the house that they built isn't here either because the church next door one of the 
priests reference holy people bought the house but he was not well liked by the town he cut down this tree in the front yard that had been a gift from the king to Shakespeare and the town rioted against him, like just upheaval that he would cut down this tree um, so he didn't like the town the town didn't like him he left instructions for the house to be demolished and then he fled so he just kind of out of spite had the house burned down so now it's just a beautiful garden, uh, which kind of has the history of Shakespeare and his life here. So we're just gonna go explore. So we are standing at the at this point in the ground where the gatehouse and the courtyard kind of met. So behind Billy this way is where the gatehouse would have been and then the courtyard starts here. This ship sculpture behind me is where the tree was that got cut down that started the riot. And then that ring of trees in the back is where kind of the heart of the house was. That's where the house was located. And she was saying that Shakespeare owned this plot of land all the way back to the river, which is a pretty good way. It's a big chunk of land. While we were at New Place, one of the ladies that worked there told us that Shakespeare is buried in the church just down the way here. I think it's called Trinity, Holy Trinity Church. Either way, we're gonna go in and see where he's buried and some of his family members. We're almost there, it's just around the corner. Turns out the church is only open for like an hour and 15 minutes on Tuesdays and it closed at 12.45 and it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon so we've, we've missed the opportunity to be able to go in and she, see Shakespeare's 
burial site. Uh, but even yet, the cemetery is stunning. The river walk is just along the other side. If you happen to be here and the church is closed and you can't get in to see his grave, I recommend coming anyway. It's beautiful. We made a quick pit stop at our hotel room to drop off the literal 10 pounds of bath bombs I've been carrying all day. And now we are headed to Anne Hathaway's cottage. Uh, Anne Hathaway was Shakespeare's wife. This is where she grew up with her family. It looks pretty big. I'm really excited about this one. Also, the walkway that the Google Maps has us taking from our hotel to Anne's cottage goes down this really neat little walking path and it's really pretty. Just like with Shakespeare's birthplace, we can't uh, take video inside, but we can take pictures and we'll try to get some good ones for you. So we just got done uh, walking through Anne's cottage and it's where Anne grew up originally and then when she was kind of old, and, oh she was 26 when she married mm -hmm. Shakespeare which is much older than normal, uh, she moved into town with him. I, that was one of the things I wanted to mention was I didn't know that, that she was 26 when they got married and he was 18. She was also pregnant. Uh, they had their first daughter four months after they got married, which I didn't know was pretty common at the time. Um, our guide was saying about a third of women in the Tudor period were pregnant when they got married because uh, at the time they still did uh, hand fasting ceremonies. Mm -hmm. So you were already betrothed really before the formal wedding. So it was pretty, pretty commonplace. An interesting fact about the house, uh, it's referred to as Anne's Cottage, it's actually never a cottage, it's a farmhouse. Uh, when it was built, it was the same size it is now, but it didn't have a second floor, it was just open from floor to ceiling, and they had a central fire that kind of exited out a hole in the roof. They didn't have fireplaces at the time, so farmhouse, not cottage. Another thing that we learned that's kind of irritating is that uh, somebody uh, tried to set the entire place on fire at some point. They succeeded at setting it yeah, on fire. Yeah, they, 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 the lady said they threw a, a petrol... A, pretty much a Molotov a, cocktail. Yeah, a the petrol window. bottle through the window, and it sat on fire, but luckily the villagers around saw it mm -hmm. and managed to, to save it. They said it looked worse than it did uh, because the fire brigade got here and they took the thatch roof off. They, they just threw, threw the whole it off, thing off yeah. to try to save Keep the building. When you go inside, uh, there are actually places that are still burnt yeah, from that fire. You can see it in the very last room that you're in. Um, the big timbers are, are still really scorched in there. I think he said it was in the 60s. Yeah. So thank goodness it made it. If you're going to devote more time to one of the three Shakespeare locations of the day, definitely give it to Anne's Cottage because it's not just the cottage that you get to tour, but there's also a couple of orchards and walking paths and a little like wilding area. So it's a lot to check out. Give yourself plenty of time.
is a wrap on all of the Shakespeare locations. We just got told they're about to close. We're going to finish out here and then we're going to go find something to eat. Yes. the Garrick Inn for dinner. It claims to be the oldest pub in Stratford-upon-Avon. They have Shakespeare, and we definitely ordered one of those. We'll see how it tastes when it gets here. We also got a cider, and then um, a couple of their dishes for dinner. I am starving. We haven't eaten since breakfast. It's after five. Feed me. Shakespeare. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. The cider, phenomenal. I'm much more a cider fan than a beer fan. We got too excited. That was a brownie with ice cream on it, but we just ate it. That is us done for the day. It was a long day, but we saw all things Shakespeare. It was awesome. First day back in the UK, full success. And now I'm gonna go use one of those 7,000 bath bombs that we bought today. Happy birthday! <laughs> you can use one too. <laughs> Thanks. Mm.